for an African to visit a European nation, an ordinary African, to visit an European nation, is like, let me give you an example my teacher used to use. It's like trying to milk an elephant because of the visa process. However, for a European to visit an African nation, most of our nations, it is like a walk on the beach. It's like going to have a cup of tea. But then that is not the problem. The tragedy is that now for an African to visit a fellow African within the African Union, the visa restrictions in many of our nations among us, between our brothers and sisters, is like trying to brush the teeth of a crocodile. They came, divided us, and they have taught us to keep each other from each other. Then they're mingling with each other and making money and growing, but they have taught us to hate each other. But for us to really enjoy the true economic benefits of the Africa continental free trade area, we need to behave like the Europeans and allow for the free movement of people and trade. To this end, in our contribution to this continental aspiration, Kenya is committed to progressively, and we are moving very fast by the end of this year, to abolish visas to citizens from African Union member states to make it easier to invest and do business in Kenya and across the continent. We are going to open the borders of Kenya. We do not fear our fellow Africans. <clears throat> Come, travel to Kenya. Live, do business in Kenya. Trade, make money in Kenya. And we hope we'll get reciprocity with the rest of you. Let us open our continent so that we can make money and live together. Let us remove the shackles of colonialism that are still embedded in our heads. I tell people that uh, the Pan-African spirit is life and kicking. Now, things might take a while. Things might be slow in Africa. Things in Africa are always slow. But I think that Africa is moving towards the right direction. Africa is making some little but significant progress. The talk of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is a great thing for the whole continent. And I understand that um, when it comes to people moving from one country to another within Africa, some countries are a little bit skeptical. Those countries that are advanced are worried that people from poorer countries like in West and Central Africa will come in and just crowd their country. And that is a legitimate worry, which I think should be taken into consideration. But we shouldn't just look just about that. We shouldn't just consider people just coming in to crowd the country or migrants filling up a particular country. We should also understand that even though the migrants will come there, they are also going to work. And instead of worrying about migrants coming and filling up your country, why not figure out a way that you can get the migrants into your labor system, into your workforce, and by so doing, they can be productive and help to promote your economy. They can work. They can be productive. And the items from those companies could be exported to other countries within Africa. And they can pay their taxes, which is going to help your government to fund social facilities or social services for the people. So instead of African leaders just worrying about the negative aspect of a borderless Africa, they should be looking for solutions to those worries or to those problems that they are worrying about. Because you will hear leaders of mostly South Africa and the North Africa all saying that they really don't want the borderless Africa thing because Africans from the West will just come in and then take over everything. Which I think that is really, really a very layman complaint. 
in order for us to get anywhere, in order for us to really, really achieve our full potential, in order for us to really, really do what we are meant to do and to become the Africa that we want to become, we must begin to see things in a more larger way. We cannot just see things just within our borders. We cannot just see things or we cannot just consider things because we think that they are convenient or they are inconvenient. We must exploit options. We must try our best to make sure that Africa can move ahead. And like most Pan-Africanists have said, if Africa could speak with one voice, if the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement could get into effect and the movement of goods and persons could also get into effect, the growth of Africa will be something that no one will ever imagine. There will be problems. There are always problems. But the benefits will outweigh the cost, will far outweigh the cost. Because Africa as a single block with a population of about 1.5 billion is something that everyone, everyone will want to get involved. So I hope that instead of AU just talking and going in circles, they can really put their feet on the ground and get this African continental free trade going. And all the leaders should ratify it. Let's get something going. Let's get the African spirit going. So many people have talked about the same thing, and they cannot all be wrong. So it's high time we get this African thing going. But you guys out there, what do you think might be the reason why African leaders are dragging their feet when it comes to rectifying the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement? Why are they so worried about the free movement of people and goods within Africa. Isn't this a great thing for Africa? Won't something like this benefit the whole Africa? So what could possibly be the reason why some leaders in Africa are not interested in this whole agenda? Share your thoughts and opinions with us in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little bit of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for the John start. And like always, see you in the next one.